Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Village of Bartlett Committee, the whole meeting for March 1, 2022. I call this meeting to order, and again, ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Daney? Here. Gansey? Here. Gunstein? Here. Hopkins? Here. Ranky? Present. Swanski? Here. President Wallace? Here. First item on our committee meeting this evening is Building and Zoning, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. There's two items on our agenda tonight. The first one is the grasslands final subdivision and PUD plat and final PUD plan phase one. The petitioners are requesting approval of a final subdivision and PUD plat and final PUD plan for phase one of grassland subdivision. The final subdivision and final PUD plan identifies three PODs or neighborhood proposed for residential development containing a total of 231 dwelling units. POD one would consist of 81 single family homes POD two would consist of 60 active adult ranch homes with POD consisting of 90 active adult duplexes. The northwest corner of Route 59 in West Bartlett, Lot 197 is designated for commercial use and will be developed in future during phase three. With that, the plan, um, the ZBA uh, approved the plan um, and we're going to review this and possibly forward it to the plan commission for further review. Does anyone have any questions? Was this already, did it already go to the plan commission? Yeah. So the preliminary process was completed. This is the final plat and final PUD process okay. and it is going to the plan commission, yes. Okay. And, and Did just, you tell us how this differs from how it, when it was brought to us before? I was just going to say for the record, it is in substantial compliance with the preliminary plans um, that you approved last July. Yeah. The commercial lots are the same size? Yeah, everything is the okay. same, yes. So the underpass is still there as well? The train under, the bike walking underpass? Yes, yes, that is all on the plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. Any other commission, questions from the committee? And we will forward this to the plan commission for further review. Perfect. The next item on our, our agenda is, is Municipal Code Title 10 Zoning Ordinance Chapter 13, Administrative and Enforcement. Attached is a proposed text amendment to the Municipal Code Title 10 Zoning Ordinance that repeals the existing Chapter 13 administration and enforcement in its entirety and adds the new Chapter 13 as drafted. This new chapter creates the Planning and Zoning Commission and outlines all of its duties and powers while abolishing the existing Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals. The Zoning Board of Appeals reviewed the proposed text amendments, conducted the required public hearing for the meeting on February 3rd, 2022. The Zoning Board of Appeals recommended approval. Does anyone have any questions on this? Item. Hopefully we the death enough. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. So we will forward this on to the village board for a vote. Correct. That's all we have under building and zoning. You got it easy tonight. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. Uh, Community and Economic Development, Chairman Gansey. Thank you, Mr. President. We have one item. We have. Uh, first, uh, first, we got to know where you're at and what the temperature is. <laughs> Let's it's in see. Miami it's is 78. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for thank you for time. making thank you for making the effort to be on. But I I do miss being there in person. <laughs> All right, oh, thank you, you Mr. President. So, so we have one be. item. <laughs> we have uh, a beta grant for the Dog Father. So they've been a successful restaurant in Bartlett for over 15 years. Um, Mr. Passaro has been an active member of the community, sponsoring many events, and was recently inducted into the Vienna Beef Hall of Fame. He's updating his business sign to an LED sign this spring. Uh, the quote was for 4217 and the Economic Development Commission is recommending a 50% VITA grant in the amount of $2,021 once the sign is completed and proof of payment is submitted. Are there any questions? Oh, let's run this through. I, 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 Tony, I saw on the news that there's a Chicago Heights. The news wasn't out of ours, but there's a Chicago Heights place that was the. You, you, you had yours in 15. They were in business for 25 years. They just showed it on the news today. 
They're in the Vienna Hot, Hot Dog Hall of Fame. Uh, it went. It traveled around here. That's all that counts. Yeah. Uh, no, it's been number one in Bartlett. I don't have any questions. Now let's move this along. All right. So we'll forward this request uh, to the village board for a final vote. Perfect. Are you putting in a new sign? Is that what it is? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you, Chairman Gansey. <laughs> Gonna shuffle up. And that yeah. does it for the Economic Development Committee. Uh, thank you, Chairman Gansey. Uh, Finance and Golf, Chairman Daney. You're all good. Thanks, Tony. All right. If anyone wants to leave, Ray, Ray can help you with the sign if you need. I'd be glad to. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President. The next item we have on our agenda is uh, finance and golf. It's the 2022 through 2023 proposed budget review for police planning and development and golf. Okay. And with that, we'll start with the... Uh, Anybody left on the other please. side of the building? Do we need a larger table? Oh my God! Hey, Pete, Pete, get up there. They have more room for you. <laughs> how, are, how are we supposed to vote no now? It's very intimidating. I think, hey, Chief, are you asking for a lot? Is that why you got to? <laughs> <laughs> back really up. set the stage here. I, I just hope hey, all. National night out. They get yeah. I just hope all of you happen. don't have to speak. No, no. Hopefully not. We, we, we try and teach people budgeting as they come up through the ranks, and so we have a lot of beginners and a lot of uh, uh, old timers on the, on the table tonight. So um, we will begin a budget review with police, and then we'll go to golf, and then hopefully we'll have time to get to um, planning and development services. So, Chief, I'll hand it over to you. All right, great. Thank you. Just real quick, Chief, just before we get started in all the budgeting stuff, um, Paul and I did talk about this. Planning and development and police usually go pretty long, so if anybody feels like, hey, let's just bump that to the next one, we can do that. All right. <coughs> okay. Thanks, Chief. Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. Uh, as Paula said, um, our budget process is basically a con conglomeration of work uh, that's assigned at the beginning of our budget process to different supervisors of our command staff. And as Paula mentioned, a lot of them are in new positions or new supervisors. Um, so from start to finish, I wanted them to be part of the process as far as like a uh, succession planning um, and learning how it goes from start to finish uh, and we get to this point. So uh, thanks to my staff for all their hard work on putting the budget together. I'm going to start with this infographic that uh, Joey put together for each department. Thank you, Joey, for doing that. Uh, target some of the highlights from our department over the past year. First of all, we're still working toward our next reaccreditation for CALEA. We're in year two of that web-based assessment process, and the assessor remotely reviews all of our files and our compliance with those files. So this time he looked at 127 standards, and after reviewing those, he found they were all uh, in compliance and literally said that they were some of the finest standards he ever reviewed. And that's a direct credit to our accreditation manager, Larry Pinsack. Uh, we're also very involved in giving back and philanthropy uh, throughout the village. So over the past year, our officers were in, involved in a toy drive, uh, Christmas gifts for seniors at the township, <laughs> food drives, diaper drives, and school supply drives, as well as um, activities supporting uh, Special Olympics, uh, being the torch run, polar plunge, roll for dough, and coffee with a champion. Uh, we welcomed Maverick to our department. He was sworn in on July 20th. Um, one of the big issues that I've been on my staff about um, combating is all of the dangerous driving activity that's been going on over the past few years. And that's just not in Bartlett, but it's a national problem. So we've really been focusing on our uh, areas where we're seeing serious and fatal crashes, which have been the Route 59 and Route 20 corridors. And just this past year in 2021, we made 508 total arrests, 
uh, for aggravated speeding. 462 of those were Class B misdemeanors, which is 26 to 34 miles an hour over the speed limit. And 46 of those were Class A misdemeanors, which is 35 miles an hour or more over the speed limit. I believe our highest speed that we registered was 104. And those 508 total arrests were a 27% increase over what we made in 2020. So we went from 359 in 2020 to 508 in 2021. Is it all age groups, Chief? It's all age groups, yep. Um. Um, we saw a record number of retirements and uh, department members leaving over the last year. In total, 15 department members either retired or left. Um, we hired eight new police officers, promoted four officers to the rank of sergeant, and promoted one sergeant to the rank of commander. Um, and currently we are five officers down. We're swearing in three new officers on Thursday, and then we'll be two officers down. So we're getting caught up. <clears throat> Community events, we're happy to see over the last year we were able to start doing those again. So we were active in National Night Out, 4th of July, Halloween parade, and the Merry and Bright event around the holidays. And I'm happy to report that just today we decided to uh, bring back the open house for this year. So it'll be the first open house in the new police department, and that's going to occur on April 24th in conjunction with the Lions Pancake Breakfast. Um, we won third place for the Illinois Traffic Safety Challenge, um, mostly due to those driving offenses we were targeting that I mentioned earlier. That's the first time ever, I think, that our department won an award uh, for traffic enforcement through Traffic Safety Challenge, and we're in a category of police departments with 51 to 65 officers. Uh, we were rated the fifth safest community of small towns in the U.S., and that was by cost of crime per, per capita, so we're happy about that. And then um, our department was recognized by the National Association of Town Watch for our 2021 National Out celebration. And as you know, we were awarded first place. And I think, Mayor, you asked how many times we've gotten first place. That was the eighth time that the village has earned first place for the National Out celebration. But as, as nice as it is to get those accolades, uh, it's more important to build the relationships with the community. And I think that's what we've all seen over the years is uh, the officers and the residents getting out and talking to each other. And uh, it's really been a big benefit to our, com to our community and police department since we started doing that. So moving on uh, to the budget highlights. Uh, our budget for 2023 has increased by 4%, and that's mainly attributed to adding a d two additional police officers as well as some increased DUCOM fees, insurance premiums, and pension obligations. Uh, the, the addition of the two officers will enable the department to increase its minimum staffing of patrol shifts, hopefully when we get full staffed. And that's the final step of the hiring plan that I proposed to the village board prior to the 21, 2021 budget. Part of that was to get us through all of these retirements that we had projected would happen. And then uh, the rest is to increase the minimum staffing. The budget also includes requests to utilize $65,500 in equitable sharing funds for the following expenses. In our capital budget, you'll see 17 iPads and accessories for command staff, totaling $30,600. What those will primarily be used for is uh, utilizing them at meetings, but also in our EOC, when we have to activate our emergency operations center, we only have two computers that people can use. So we'll use the iPads um, so people can access documents, email things back and forth, access the internet, and that's really going to improve our ability to manage critical incidents in the EOC. We're also looking uh, at establishing a new interface to the FBI for $15,000. Uh, our old provider uh, had the same records management system as us. That was Northwest Central Dispatch. So we were able to kind of piggyback on their system and go through their system. They just switched over all of their um, records management systems and CAD to a new provider. So we lost that connection. So we have to have a new connection to the FBI. And then in professional development, I'd like to send two senior, uh, two commanders to the Senior Management Institute for Police. One new item that we're going to be requesting this year is the addition of seven license plate readers. 
We'd like to install these cameras around the entrances and exits to our village to assist in investigating and solving crimes. The cameras don't retain any personal information related to registered owners or possible drivers of vehicles. Instead, they allow us to search by date, time, and location, as well as make, color, and type of vehicle. Moving on to our progress toward the short-term goals for routine goals. Um, one of the main highlights I want to focus on here is over the past couple of years, we've been offering citizen police academy classes. Last year, we offered two. We did not do a teen citizen police academy class because uh, school was mostly remote. Um, so we're looking at doing a, another teen citizen police academy class in the coming weeks. So we're in the process of setting that up right now. And that's really a demographic that we're striving to reach out to, to build relationships with. Uh, enhancing community events, as I mentioned, we're uh, seeking to host that open house on April 24th. Maintaining or enhancing village standards for delivery. We uh, want to continue using the frontline software program. We use that for overnight parking requests, vacation ho uh, watch house checks, and then directed patrols regarding traffic complaints, and then condition reports like uh, street lights out. And I included the statistics from the last year that uh, we found in Frontline. <coughs> for long-term goals, um, as, w as far as examining service delivery and methods and approaches, um, we got some staff certified to teach the Police Executive Research Forum's ICAT course. ICAT stands for Integrating Communication, Assessment, and Tactics, and that's going to help us better address mental health-related calls. Um, we also have been working with Public Works on the new disaster app for improving efficiency and coordination in responding to disasters. And another big one, you know, uh, Trustee McCarthy and, Tr and Chief Gabrenia talked about the relationship with, between our departments, and that's really improved, I think, since Chief Gabrenia came on. And we've made a big commitment toward working together, not only on critical incidents, but also training together to be able to better handle those incidents. And one of the things we've been working toward is um, an active shooter response situation called rescue task force training. So we've been doing that over the past few years and we're doing the final element of that this summer. Uh, so that is a big uh, advantage that we'll have in the village here. As far as complex goals, developing a strategy to identify and complete roadway improvement and traffic mitigation programs and designs. Uh, we continue to get complaints around schools, usually with inclement weather because they're all designed as walking schools and in those uh, in clement weather uh, situations, everybody wants to drive their kids to school. So Centennial and Sycamore Trails were two of the uh, schools we dealt with this year with some of those issues. And we anticipate in this next year um, having to come up with some ideas to mitigate situation at West Bartlett and 59 during the construction and redevelopment of that intersection. <laughs> Other highlights. Um, we formed a partnership with Elgin Community College to offer internship opportunities to students. So one of the things we encouraged them or said we were interested in was minority students and female students to come on and uh, do an internship with our police department. And we had, I think, three or four come through last summer. So that was uh, a nice addition. Those are unpaid in internships, but they are able to get some experience and exposure to a police department, especially if they're looking at, uh, at a potential career in law enforcement. Um, on to the police summary page. <clears throat> as far as uh, increases here, you'll see the increase in police officers from 48 to 50 to account for the two new officers we're asking for. Those are the only um, increases in staffing that we're seeking. Um, and then as far as our activity measures, pr pretty much everything went up, and I think that's attributed to everything kind of opening back up again uh, after COVID. So our services went up, our offenses went up, court cases went up. Uh, traffic enforcement, I already talked about. We saw a lot of that. Um, our training hours increased. One of the big ones we're seeing is these FOIA requests. So it went from 1,380 in 21-22 to 1,449 in 22 and 23. And it's not just the number of FOIA requests that we're getting, it's the scope. Uh, when we're getting them, um, especially from attorneys, they're asking for everything, everything we have, all documents, video, audio, and that is a big process, especially when it comes to a fire and how many vehicles we had out there and they're all running the MVRs and uh, 
it's just going to get uh, more complicated, I think, once we get body cameras. And then we'll, we have all that extra video, too. So this is uh, something we're working toward. We're in the process of um, trying to find out a fix for making it easier for redactions of the videos because there's hours and hours and hours of video and we don't have really a good software redaction. So we found a company that is going to allow us to do that on a month to month basis as needed for a nominal fee. But um, that takes up a lot of time. The next page is the personnel request detail where you'll see the request for the two new police officers. Um, again, we're hoping that once we realize all these officers and they get out of training, that uh, the patrol shifts will be fully staffed and we in can increase our minimum patrol staffing levels. On to the capital budget, you'll see that we're requesting to replace two patrol vehicles this year. Both vehicles are five years old. They'll both have over 100,000 miles. Both of them have had uh, maintenance issues and um, they meet the criteria on the vehicle replacement guideline form. Uh, one is rated at a 37 and high priority replacement is anywhere 28 or higher and the other one is rated at a 38. <clears throat> the next item is that ID Network's RMS link to the FBI. That's how they get our, all of our data um, that we have to, are required to report to the F FBI. That's $15,000 and that is a new request. We're requesting to replace a speed trailer. It is broken and unable to be repaired. So that is $11,000. Number four is the license plate readers. It's a yearly contract per reader. Seven, we're asking for seven of them at $2,500 per license plate reader. Sure. So we had some issues in town this year that if we had cameras and they were in the right place, we might have been able to capture and solve some incidents. One was the fatal crash on Lake Street where a pedestrian got hit. It was a hit and run. And we didn't have any information other than it might have been a white vehicle and we had a piece of a headlight from it. So if we had a camera up on Lake Street and it caught a vehicle with a license plate or we saw that it didn't have a headlight, we could search by color, we can search by make, we can search by model, we can search by license plate. Um, so that may have been beneficial there. We had the shooting over in uh, the townhomes off of Harbor Terrace. Um, so if we had a camera in that area, uh, we could have captured it there. But one of the benefits of going with the vendor we're looking at is there's a lot of other communities in our area that are also going with that vendor. And there is an opportunity to share information. So even though one of our cameras may have not picked it up, the camera in another town may have picked it up. Um, and we're able to search that um, as long as they give us permission, um, we can all search each other, other's cameras for the data that we're looking for. So I think they can be very beneficial in helping us stay one of the safest communities in the United States, but also helping us solve crimes that occur. How'd you identify where the seven would go? The seven well, we took, a look at, we took a look at some of the locations um, that we thought they might be um, most beneficial at. Like I said, we, I mentioned the exits and entrances to the village. So Carol Stream last week presented at their budget meeting, they are getting cameras. What we wanna do is coordinate with the other agencies where their cameras are at and put ours in different locations so we can get more bang for the buck. So as far as the locations go, <clears throat> the proposed locations right now, and this could change, would be Lake Street and Park Boulevard, Stearns Road and Newport, Route 59 and Army Trail Road, Lake Street and Naperville Road, West Bartlett Road and Route 25, Devon Avenue and Newport Boulevard, and Stearns Road and South Bartlett Road. Now part of that process is we have to get permits to mount, because it's a pole mounted system and it's got a solar, small solar panel attached to it, but we have to get permits to put them on county right away or state right away. So the vendor would seek those permits. In the meantime, during the process it takes to get those permits, they would install them in a location where we already have the right of way in a village area. So they would mount them there until we got the permit from either the county or the state, and then they would move them for free to those locations. Um, 
There are currently 89 Illinois clients uh, for the company we're looking for. Some of the most local agencies include Barrington Hills, Bensonville, Bolingbrook, Burr Ridge, Cary, DuPage County, DuPage County Forest Preserve, Glendale Heights, Kane County Sheriff's Office, Libertyville, Lombard, McHenry, Naperville, Oakbrook Terrace, Palatine, South Barrington, Vernon Hills, and Villa Park. Uh, Hanover Park is looking at them. As I mentioned, Carroll Stream got them approved in their budget the other night, and South Elgin did as well. So there's a lot of communities around us that have them. And one of the articles that I read is even in um, communities that have a high crime rate, once the cameras go up and people know they're there, the crime rate has gone down uh, because it's that uh, deterrent effect of the risk of getting caught. So I think it could be a, a, a benefit to our village. If they, get van if they get vandalized, does the company pay for them, or do we have to pay for them? Or? The company owns them, so they would come out and replace it. So who has access to the data, and how long is the data stored? So I believe the data is stored for 30 days. Flock is the company we're looking at going with. They own the data. And then we, as a police department, have the option of letting other departments view our data, and they have the option of whether or not to allow us to view their data. Within those 30 days? Within those 30 days. Okay. So is this information that would be shared with any other intergovernment? I mean, you're talking about other, like Carol Stream, right? Streamwood? Any other in government agencies? It depends on how we set it up. So you can open it up to any law enforcement agency in the area, or you can do it on a case-by-case -case basis where someone would have to reach out to our department and say, can we have access to your data, and then we would grant it. So it's it, depending on our comfort level and how we want to set that up. So it's not open to Homeland Security or... I'd have to get that answer for you. I don't know about federal agencies like that, but I could find that out. Thank you. I have a question for you on it. What, what do these cameras look like in a size capacity and how are they mounted or where are they mounted? So if you've seen our radar boxes that are pole mounted, mm -hmm. it's smaller than that. The camera is about this size and then there is a... I've got, I brought photos because I kind of anticipated you might. My concern is like if you go to the city of Chicago, they have a red or a blue beacon light on it and a camera. I just wanted to see if it's the same type of setup or is it a smaller um, self-contained unit? It's, it's fairly small and in, inconspicuous, I would say. The biggest part of it is the solar panel. And it's just grabbing the license plate? That's the primary function of this? Grabbing the license plate, the color of the car, the make of the car, the model of the car, and then the date, time, and location that it passes through the camera. So what you're getting now is you're getting a picture of what one of the cameras looks like installed on a pole. Uh, also, this is a picture of the solar panel. And then um, DuPage County is mapping all of the communities that have license plate readers right now, as well as ones who are projecting to get license plate readers, and that's the other document that you're seeing. So as you can see, there's a lot of them that are either already in place or projected to be in place. How many vendors offer this in the state of Illinois? I don't know how many off the top of my head. But you feel comfortable with this vendor? Yeah. So there's a couple benefits to going with this one. Uh, one is most of the police departments around us are going with it. If we go with another vendor, we can't share information with that. You know, you can't, the vendors don't talk to each other. Um, and then the flock system that we're looking at, we are looking at going to Axon body cameras and in-car cameras for our squad cars. There is an option um, to have these LPRs as part of the in-car camera system in the squad cars, and Axon is partnering with Flock for that. So it would all be part of one system if we decided we wanted our squad cars to have them as well. Owns the cameras. Does that mean that they pay for them when the drunk uh, runs over them with the his or her truck? I believe they do. I, I'll find out the exact answer on that, but they own the cameras. We just have a contract to access the data. Do they install them in this price? 
they do install them. And like I said, if we have to put them on the village right of way and then they get a permit for state or county, they'll move them for free and reinstall them. I think it could be a, an extremely helpful tool for you guys. I think it, I think it could be. These being mounted are going to deter people speeding and reduce speed because they think they're being, you know, have a camera on them? Do you think it'll help curtail some of the speeding issues? I doubt it. I mean, I, I think it's pretty widely known that the only place that is allowed to have speed-related cameras right now is the city of Chicago or construction zones for the state police. So I don't know that. I mean, people think that the cameras on the top of the traffic light standards are video cameras, but they're not. They're just the sensors for the intersection. So I, I don't think people would think that. There's no more questions, I'll move on to the next. Um, so we're looking to replace two automatic external defibrillator units. This is uh, replacing, or actually we're replacing four CR2 AEDs. We're replacing four older AEDs that we can't get batteries for anymore. Um, and one of the things I've always reported over the past few years when we've been replacing these is how many AED saves we've had. So since 2015, uh, our AEDs have been deployed numerous times. Sometimes they don't advise a shock, sometimes they do. Uh, but since 2015, we've saved 12 lives with AEDs. Um, in 2021, we had one. In 2020, we had one. In 19, we had two. In 18, we had two. In 17, we had two. In 16, we had two. And in 15, we had one. So they've been uh, very beneficial uh, regarding our officers' response to um, critical medical situations. Uh, part of that also is we need two AED training units. Those are $555 a piece. Um, number seven, Gray Key is a software service we're looking to purchase. It uh, seems like every crime right now has some type of cell phone related data. So this Gray Key service will allow us to utilize cell phone forensics um, Number one, it allows us to unlock iPhones if we get a warrant or we have a deceased victim where they have a password protected phone and we can't get into it. This would allow us to get into those phones to get valuable information, help us solve a case. Um, but it also allows us to extract the data and to view all the data um, on those phones. So um, again, that's a contract for one year of service. Number eight, is iPads for the command staff that I referred to. Uh, those will be funded out of the equity <laughs> fund and would be used during EOC operations as well as meetings regarding notes. Um, and then number nine is we're seeking to replace two of our p police bicycles with power bikes. We bought two power bikes a year ago and they allow us to get out into the neighborhoods easier. The officers can load them onto the back of their squad cars and then if they get a call in another area, Power assist on the bikes allows them to get back to their squads quickly, put the bike on the squad, and then respond to the incident. Um, we recently sent out community surveys in the BART letter, and we've always got it active on our website, but that's one of the uh, requests in the comments that I've seen from residents is for officers to get out of their cars more and interact with people in the neighborhood. So that's one way that uh, our officers will be able to do that. So that's it for our capital budget. Moving on to our professional development detail. Um, we are seeking to send an officer to traffic reconstruction school. Um, that's again part of our succession planning. Some of our officers who have had that certification have retired or are going to be retiring in the next couple of years. So we're trying to get some more people trained with that. Um, our CALEA conference is going to be in Chicago this year, so we're going to send a deputy chief and our accreditation manager to that. The Illinois Homicide Investigators Association Conference, we're looking to send eight investigators to that. And part of that conference, they get recertified as a homicide investigator. They have to keep that certification up. On the next page, uh, the International Association of Police Chiefs of Police Conference, that's in Dallas. We're going to look to send the chief, a deputy chief, and two commanders to that. 
Um, the IPELRA conference, we've got a lot of benefit out of regarding labor relations and labor law, so we're going to look to send two command staff members to the annual conference in Galena, and then also uh, command staff members to the annual em employment law seminar. Um, actually, there's one coming up Friday that we're all going to. One of the new things we're asking for is for four Honor Guard members to attend the Illinois Police Officer Memorial. We did that uh, several years ago, and then we've got several new members of our Honor Guard now. We'd like to get them down there to the memorial. Also, we're sending an officer to Crisis Negotiators Association Conference. Uh, one of our detectives, Stephanie Navarro, just got certified as a hostage negotiator, and so she is part of a uh, team on DuPage Merit, and so she has to go to this conference regarding that. The next one is for our officer who's assigned to the DEA. Uh, she's required to go to this Drug, Terrorist, and Criminal Interdiction Conference in Nashville in June. Um, the next category on the next page is our leadership and management courses. So we're looking to send a new sergeant to a 10-week uh, staff and command course through Northwestern University. And then we're looking to send two new sergeants to the supervision of police class through Northwestern University, which is a two-week course. The higher management levels command and up are eligible to attend the Police Executive Research Forum Senior Management Institute for Police, and I'd be looking to send uh, two <coughs> commanders to that and utilize equitable sharing funds for that expense. On the next page, uh, one of the big expenses, as always, is the Police Training Institute Basic Academy fees. We're anticipating potentially seven positions at $6,100 per recruit, totaling $42,700. In the past couple of years, I had been budgeting equitable sharing funds to be used for this because uh, I let's be, the Illinois uh, Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board was not reimbursing academy fees like they had in the past. So now that they started reimbursing the academy fees, we're just gonna use regular budget funds for that because they won't reimburse if we use our federal equitable sharing funds. <clears throat> Um, another thing we're looking to expand is the number of drug recognition experts that we have. Uh, so we, ha we currently have three, one detective, two patrol officers. We're trying to get one patrol officer on every shift certified as a drug recognition expert. And that's pretty much it for professional development. As far as professional association goes, not much changed here. The major change was to merit. Um, which is DuPage County's um, major crimes team. So that went from $4,000 to $6,500 for a $2,500 increase. That was really the only thing that uh, had a substantial change this year. And then moving on to our line item, regular salaries increased 4%. Um, a lot of that is due to adding the two new officers. Our employee group insurance saw a 9% increase. Vehicle setup went down 34% because we're seeking to purchase fewer vehicles, so there's less vehicles to set up. Our subscriptions and, and uh, publications decreased 20% because we canceled a subscription we no longer needed. We took a good look at postage because over the past few years we've been dealing with expungements and uh, other things like that, and so we adjusted that based on the amount we've actually been spending. It didn't, uh, we used to send out a lot of things by certified mail too, which is a significant expense. And we no longer had to send some of the local adjudication stuff out using certified mail. So we saw a reduction in fees. So we adjusted our posted expenses from 15,000 to 6,000. So that was a 60% savings there. <clears throat> in professional development, we saw a 7% increase. Again, that's for those police academy fees that had previously been uh, budgeted to equitable sharing. Safety program expenses went up um, about $4,000. That's a 26% increase because we are seeking to buy some inf infant mannequins for CPR training. And then we also have to pay for CPR licenses for our staff and for the crossing guards which we didn't have to pay for in the past. Our, our prisoner detention, we 
see a 40% decrease there. We just reduced it based on the amount we've been spending over previous years. Our police and fire commission has a 30% increase because we have to run a police test um, this coming spring. In fact, applications are available right now. And then I increased our contingencies because with everything going on, many departments in our area have seen lower numbers of people interested in becoming a police officer. So they're running through their list pretty fast. Um, so we may need to run a second test. And we also opened up that lateral testing process. So in the event we run through that, that gives us a little bit of uh, ability to pay for another test, whether it's a regular or lateral test. Um, our equitable sharing was down 54%, and then our transfer pol to police pension is up about 7% due to increased pension obligations. And as I mentioned, overall, it's a 4% increase in our budget. Um, as far as our line item justification goes, nothing really changed with service agreements. Equipment rentals went up a little bit, as, as did uh, computer services. Part of computer services, a new item, is our uh, INET viewer license fees. In the past, DuPage County ETSB paid for those licenses, and now they've passed those fees on to us. Uh, so that's just a slight increase there. In DUCOM, um, the DuPage ETSB is replacing all of the police and fire radios this year. Um, they are at end of life, 10 years, so that's all the portable radios that we wear on our hips, as well as the radios that are in our EOC and record section. They're paying for most of it. The only cost we have to pay for would be like battery chargers, bank battery chargers, and our CSO, potentially our CSO radios. So what the DuPage State's Attorney's Office is doing is they are, they are reviewing everything and rule, they will issue a ruling on whether community service officers are considered first responders. If they're not considered first responders, we would have to be on the hook for most of this uh, four-year fee of $25,332, which they'll lay us, let us pay back over four years, so that's where you see the $6,335. But what I anticipate is that the state's attorney is going to rule that CSOs are first responders, and that would substantially reduce the number that we have to pay. I, would, I think for the uh, bank battery chargers, it's about $1,000 for those. So. Hopefully, we won't be on the hook for most of those fees. <clears throat> Supplies on the pistol range. Um, we've got some range maintenance that we added for $1,000, and the rest of that uh, about $4,500 increase is due to increased ammunition fees. Uh, when we order our ammunition, it's taken around a year from the time we order to actually get it. There's a very, very short supply of ammunition, and that's why the cost has gone up as well. Um, we reduced the amount of gasoline we were projecting to utilize based on past usage, but with the, the, the cost of gasoline where they're at now, uh, I don't think anyone anticipated where that's going, so hopefully it, it comes back into line soon. As I mentioned, postage uh, went way down based on what we're using. Our safety program expenses went up a little bit due to the purchase of the mannequins and the CPR cards. And then the police and fire commission fees went up based on the police tests that we're holding. So unless you have any other questions, that is it for the police department. As far as fuel goes, did we ever have uh, a gas station at Public Works for the police department to fill up? We did. We had a, a gas station at Public Works where not only the police department filled up, but uh, Public Works filled up, the fire department filled up, Hanover Township filled up. Um, but I think the, the issue was the cost of maintaining the underground tanks and things like that. So what we're part of right now is a part of something called WEX, and there is a state agreement, I think, that covers the fuel fees. So it was more beneficial to um, become a part of that than have to maintain and purchase all of our own gasoline at Public Works. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, Chief. Appreciate Thank it very you, much. Chief. The next one would be uh, golf. I think, I think, are we doing 
Yeah, well, let's get golf out of here. Presentation's going to be short. Okay. Oh, they're called the, to the old, old guys. The youngest one there. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. The old dog. Oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, if we don't finish with Roberta tonight, we'll have to start at 6 next time. If you do golf and Roberta. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Board, and thank you for allowing uh, the three-headed monster at the golf course here to uh, present our budget to you. As you know, we, we do our budget a little differently. Uh, I am responsible for the, the golf portion of the budget. Uh, Paul Peterson, our food and beverage director, does the food and beverage part, and Matt Gearmack, our superintendent, handles the uh, grounds part. I will touch on some of the golf highlights uh, relatively quickly here and then hand it over to these gentlemen. Uh, we did see a, we are anticipating a 6% revenue increase in golf revenues this upcoming season. A uh, couple of highlights, we do uh, about 12,000 uh, resident, Bartlett resident rounds every year. Um, biggest highlight we had last year, honestly, was COVID restrictions uh, going away and allowing us to operate the golf course uh, more in a normal fashion as opposed to 2020. Um, we were able to return to doing our golf outings, uh, hosting the Rotary, the Chamber, uh, Bartlett Lions Club, as well as hosting uh, all the U46 uh, Bartlett High School and South Elgin High School. Another highlight, one of the big things last year was uh, a purchase of a new golf simulator at the golf course. Uh, um, along with that came a golf shop renovation where we were able to make a, uh, a nice deal with Adidas Golf Company to, to become our primary clothing vendor. Um, they did a great job sending us uh, display materials and, and giving us discounts on product. We also did a golf shop renovation in coordination with uh, fitting that simulator in there and another shout out to Public Works as they did the construction on that and saved us uh, quite, a, quite a bit of money there. Going, uh, no, going forward and, and, and to, uh, we have no, no personnel requests in, in golf. Uh, professional development and professional association are going to remain uh, essentially the same. Our capital, in capital budget for golf, I am requesting a new uh, credit card automated driving range machine for our range. Our existing machine is several years out of date and is taking uh, several times a day to run down there and check on the machine. It's an older machine with a coin mechanism where the coin slides down a little machine and has to hit a trip wire. Our new machine will allow us to, to uh, customers to purchase range balls with credit cards and also purchase bulk balls. So the golf courses that have gone to this machine have seen about a 20% increase in, in range revenues over time. Um, with that being said, um, my line, if you have any questions on line items or anything like that, feel free. And with, I'll turn it over to Paul. Well, Matt, oh, okay, you're going to Matt. No questions? Okay. All right, good evening, Mayor and Board. I will be going over the grounds budget tonight. If you have any questions, feel free to stop me at any time, and I will be happy to answer them. We will start with the grounds personnel requests, and we have none. So, next page. The next page is capital outlay requests. Uh, our first item is for a greens roller. It is part of our vehicle replacement fund. Our current unit is from 2007 and has exceeded its life expectancy by four years. It has a total of 5,500 hours on the unit. There is a formula you can use to convert machine hours to like miles per, or like your miles on your car. And it comes out to roughly the 5,500 hours, comes out to like 300,000 miles on your car. So the machine has been through a lot of hours and miles and usage, so it's getting costly to repair bearings and uh, the rollers are breaking and the hydraulic hoses are starting to need repair, so the cost to repair is starting to get expensive for the units. And then it just has some really good agronomic health benefits to the grass. It promotes smooth putting surfaces and increases the green speeds, which golfers really enjoy. Faster greens gets around the word of mouth. And then uh, 
It also can reduce our algae and dollar spot disease. So hypothetically, hopefully, we can use less fungicides so it's more environmentally friendly for the golf course, which is always nice. No questions? You guys have like a unit like that that needs a lot of repair. Do you guys have a mechanic on staff that fixes a lot of it or do you have to bring in outside? Yeah, we have Dennis as our mechanic who is a very handy man. He can He's fix a miracle a lot. worker. Yeah. He's created. I call him the wizard. Yeah. He takes a rare sense on the greens roller. I, in 25 years, Matt got to demo that greens roller last year from, from Toro and hit it out there for what, about six weeks? Uh, a couple of I had about a, no, I had about a week. Well, we never had so many people come in to tell us how good the greens were when you were, when you were really got a lot of compliments. It also allows us to use the mowers less. You can get away with mowing one day, rolling the next day, so your machine hours. You get less wear and tear on your machines. You're splitting up the wear and tear, so. so it's going to last longer. Yeah, we hope. But yeah, the golfers really love the fast greens, and it seems to work out really well. The next page is professional development. We have a small de small decrease from last year's budget, so that's good. The next page is professional association detail. It's the same as last year. There are no changes. Then uh, line item detail, we have an increase of 3%. Some of the bigger ones would be automotive supplies, just due to the rising price of gasoline and diesel. Uh, tree man's material, up 25%. We're still working on removing some of the larger silver maples around the greens, and they're so close to the greens, we need a company to come in and kind of bring them down from the top and drop them and do them safely so they don't damage the golf course. And uh, building and grounds improvements, it's an increase of 400%. We're kind of doing, hoping to do some new landscaping around the clubhouse. And then the larger number would be for rebuilding some of the older bunkers on the golf course. They're 30 years old, the oldest bunkers. Their life expectancy is roughly 10, 10 years. So the oldest ones are past their time. So we're hoping to kind of start rebuilding the oldest ones first in-house, working with a contractor to do some of the shaping to reduce the prices. I never knew there was a life expect expectancy on a bunker. bunker. Oh yeah, car pass has life expectancies, everything out there. Wow. And just yeah, them up. That's, that's it, unless you guys have any questions for me. Questions for Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, uh, trustees and mayor, for letting me do the food and beverage aspect of the golf operation. A big thank you to these guys for being such great people to work with and uh, to get the golf course in such good condition to, uh, for us to go ahead and be able to look out our windows and see that every day from the banquet facility. I want to jump right back to the uh, little uh, stuff at the very beginning again. I want to comment on the fact we're so happy that it'll be the first year without uh, any COVID restrictions for two years in a row. So some actual numbers can go ahead and go through. And um, Banquets especially, we're looking for a 21.5% increase over what we're, what we're uh, estimating to do this year. We're going to see record uh, midway and beverage cart sales going through. Uh, our big struggle for the last couple of years has been staffing. The lack of staff is, is real. Uh, the wages you need to pay is, re is real. Lack of food and food prices, supply chain, it's all there. So just functioning, going through events where probably the most difficult thing we've done for the couple of years, marketing everything that they're coming back because we've done well, but we, we spent a lot of time trying to make it through events. Uh, we, we did do the best of the NAD award. Thank you, Ray, for picking that out. And the second time for the Hall of Fame. Uh, we got 45 winnings on the book coming up, 12 more than the previous year. And normally at budget time, I can tell you 14 for the next year, and we're at 16, so we're a couple ahead of normal uh, going forward. Um, You mentioned all those increases in costs. Yes. Obviously, are we translating that into what we charge? Yes. We're about 15% up uh, going into the clubhouse with the menu. We did a 3% increase and another 8% increase in banquets. Um, that's going to be a year down the road to finally do all that, almost to, to realize those differences because of the fact so much is booked already. But we'll be aggressive with that going forward again as we see how the prices go through the year. Um, well, did you add a full-time staffer? Is that why regular salaries went up? I, 
we didn't really, we, we, we just uh, reclassified uh, a person in the kitchen that's Dustin's assistant uh, that really has been operating as a sous chef. Uh, because of our lack of staff, he's the same person that's on, same benefits and everything else. He's just going to go salary instead of hourly to account for the fact that we have no hourly staff to go ahead and do it. So he's kind of our uh, catch-all. That's why that went up higher. We didn't really add anybody, though. Uh, you know, going back, uh, capital outlay under the golf program are really items that, uh, that, that we brought up. Uh, one is the restroom renovations. Uh, it's in there for $20,000. Uh, we, up, we did a nice job updating the bridal suite a couple years ago, and that's been a big part of uh, getting people to go ahead and book. People spend the day in there doing their hair and uh, dresses and sometimes show up 9, 10 in the morning and spend the whole day. Uh, they go through this restroom that's in there that's 25 years old with yellow partitions that are they're cracking and it's tiled. It, it just doesn't match. It just doesn't match. So for this amount, we're talking about to change the whole thing, upgrade it, uh, get rid of the outdated decor, uh, and this is for the men's room, the ladies' room, and upgrade the uh, midway somewhat also. Is there anything uh, the else? Second. Is there anything else that people um, a reason that they don't book with Bartlett Hills that you feel like you could add to your budget? Other, like, I know you just mentioned like the rest, the bathrooms. Is there anything else that people have mentioned if they said no, no, thank you? This isn't for me because of this. Probably the only, probably the most, uh, it's a big deal for us to be able to host an event and have a, a ceremony on site at the same time so that everyone's there at the same time. Uh, and there's no driving, there's no downtime between pictures and everything. Uh, probably the biggest thing that people would, would say is they would like to see some kind of outdoor area that they could hold a ceremony that's not necessarily on the veranda uh, overlooking the golf course, but someplace where you could have a tent or a real uh, gazebo or something that, and the golf course is very close to the building, but that's probably one of the most common things you hear is so, uh, a separate what, space to go ahead and do that. So what prevents us like from doing like a pergola or something small like that? You, you, you could go over that veranda. They're looking for something sitting on the grass in the golf course. Okay. Uh, some of the, some courses close their close a hole down or something in the middle of the afternoon on a Saturday or Sunday, and maybe move the tees up a little bit and use that as a background to go ahead and have a wedding ceremony. That's not an always an easy thing to do because we do have a lot of golf traffic on the weekends. But uh, some courses get around it that way. We would not want to interrupt Ray's golf. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Could, we could do the ceremony in the simulator, though, right? Yeah, room. right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you can change the background. Renee, that's one of the problems. Yeah. Make it a beach. Uh, in or fact, something. I know that they've actually even had staff go out to take pictures around the 18th uh, green, and then the, uh, the golfers are coming to the tee box, and they have to hold up and whatnot. So it's rather difficult to go out in the course when, uh, when you have a full, full uh, round of uh, people out there playing golf. And the other thing probably would be a separate area for – uh, someone to have a ceremony and then a little extra area to go ahead and have their cocktail party and then exit into the reception hall instead of having it all in one room, but we simply don't have the space to go ahead and do that. When, when you were talking about remodeling on, the, on the, the washrooms, did you anticipate any potentially looking mm -hmm. at touchless or, you know, water and soap and that? I'm, I've been seeing that when you're out yeah, there, 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 We've talked about all that and the specifics of the hardware and everything going through. We're going to upgrade LED lighting and um, t touchless everything would be certainly better, which you see all over the place right now. Uh, but hardware on the sinks and hardware through the, all the restrooms and everything, that's all going to be part of it. Okay, thank you. Um, the, sec the second part of it is a circulation pump in the uh, basement. Uh, it's passed its life expectancy by seven years. Uh, it's failed several times this winter. It controls all the heat in the basement, so you can't have curling contests downstairs. So um, if that goes down, then it's, it's going to uh, be some pipe issues. So that's planned for the fall uh, before the winter gets bad, and the restroom renovations would be over the winter sometime when, during the slow period. Uh, specifically, 
Uh, restaurant is next. Uh, we're really not asking for any personnel or capital outlay. Uh, professional development is just Bassett and food handling, food service sanitation, uh, certifications for management. Um, no professional association under restaurant. I think we've already touched on the fact that regular salaries are up, but temporary are going to be down to kind of offset that for the most part. Uh, you're going to see in here, you're going to see supply costs, material costs, everything from glo uh, gloves, masks, sanitation device, chemicals, everything went through the roof the last couple of years, and we haven't seen that start coming down yet. Uh, so hopefully it gives us a little bit of relief going forward. Uh, any questions about restaurant in there? Uh, the rest of the same items under banquet. Uh, you're going to see the same split between regular salaries and temporary. Um, under banquet expenses, really the same thing. And the last category is the midway, the little. Uh, uh, We'll stand out there at nine holes. That makes us about $80,000 a year through hot dogs and beer and, and everything else. And that uh, with an expanded liquor menu and some food specials and everything else, that's, uh, that's turned into probably uh, 20000 30000 up from where it was three, four years ago as an average for just for profit coming in. So uh, that, that's a good sign. Besides that, that's about it for food and beverage, I believe. Any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen, for being here this evening. And, gentlemen, again, congratulations on the fourth straight year on the uh, Best Not, the Best of Wedding Not Award. So, thanks for being here. Thank you. And, Matt, I expect smoother greens now, too. They will be. <laughs> Hi. You're going to move into Public Works? Some of you don't know, they've already replaced, Public Works has already replaced one of the sand traps. Yes. They did it all. An 18. Almost all of it. We they had to did. hire somebody to shape it, but how many times did you get into it? They did a great job. Kevin, Kevin's right. The mayor's right. They took the back trap out, and uh, they rebuilt yeah. the, uh, the... Right. You have five minutes. <laughs> uh, Phil? Phil? Paul? Matt, I don't know what, if you have to hang around for the remainder of the budget meeting. You're done, aren't you? you can... We're going to sit through this one. We're trying to Okay. All right. Team spirit. All right. It seemed like Scott was going to join you, and then he ditched you. <laughs> trying to work with you, a little cooperation would be nice. <laughs> All right. Planning and development. Um, I'll, I'll start with the highlights. And... Uh, I think our, one of our biggest highlights is the online permitting system that went live in April. Um, it's been very well received <coughs> and um, has kept our department actually very busy. I, I would like to thank the board for um, approving that in last year's budget because it has been really night and day in our department. Um, it's unbelievable. Um, the stacks of paper have just disappeared. And overall has saved our department in office supplies, paper. It's just amazing. Um, part of the system, we uh, instituted a new express permit uh, that is issued in one to three days. And I can tell you that we have a record permit issuance of uh, nine minutes. It went through so quickly that the person reviewing the pl uh, permit um, application um, thought the person didn't pay because it processed, the payment was a little bit slower than the issuance of the permit actually, and when we hit the refresh button, it showed that everything went through as it should. So nine minutes to issue a permit. Nice. Unbelievable. Um, over the past year, we have reviewed over $85 million worth of improvements, and our staff has collected over $1.7 million in fees. I have a more brewing update. Yesterday, they submitted the last two items that I was waiting for. Um, Bob's already approved the plan, uh, reviewed the plans, has a few minor changes. Our village attorney's reviewing the bond. 
And um, as you soon as they give me the go-ahead, I'm issuing the permit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just heard Brian say do it. Bert, you're done. Just go issue it now. <laughs> I love it. All right. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping in days. Uh, the second 400,000 square foot building in Cook County uh, was completed and has been leased to one entity, which is great. Um, you heard the grasslands tonight. They're moving forward. It's coming through. 231 units. Eastfield, uh, you know, they've completely sold out. We're, they've been, um, construction's been at, at a rapid pace. It's been unbelievable. We set a record year for inspections with over 8,300. Bartlett Station, you approved that with 90 uh, uh, units for an apartment complex. I have an update on the Bartlett Automotive Mall that you went through expeditiously through the zoning process. Uh, they submitted civil engineering plans this week. Um, because they know that takes the longest to review, and they need to do that to go through some of their state permits and get those signed off. And as soon as they get that um, through um, our review of the engineering, then they're going to submit architectural. So that's coming on. Our adjudication cases have doubled over the last two years. Um, we had updates to the 2020 building code with the adoption of the swimming pool and spa code. And then finally, um, we have worked with the board on the creation of the new Planning and Zoning Commission. And with that, our um, budget for Planning and Development Services is proposed to increase by 5%. We are asking for a plan reviewer. Um, you know, I don't have a joke like Todd usually gives, but I do have a trivia question. If you had to guess what the number one permit is that we issue in our department, what would you say it was? Fence? Anybody else? Patio. I like patio. Fence. Windows. Windows. Windows was number one, driveways was number two, and roofs was number three. And if you think about it, and you think about the trend that we're seeing with those types of permits, um, we are in a beginning, I believe, in a boom cycle again, because 30 years ago, was the time when we were at our housing boom. And now those houses are 25, 30 years old, and they are doing these, what I would call, upkeep, maintenance, routine permit projects. And we are busy. We are very busy with those. So it, make, it makes sense that our housing stock is aging. Um, Non-residential, I've got, I've got three projects. I believe coming in Brewster Creek Business Park. I've got four coming in Blue Heron Business Park. I've got possibly three coming in Southwind Business Park. And for new residential, I, you know, I've touched on the grasslands is 231 residential. The residents of Bartlett Station is 90. And then I've got another residential rental development coming before the board in April with 120 units. Say located. Chick and 59. So with all of this being said and this proposed development, it's a lot, but it's a really good problem for the village. It's good. And hence, though, that's why we are asking for a new plan reviewer <laughs> in the building division. Um, you know, it's our goal to keep moving development forward, and in order to do that with all of this coming at us, um, I, I do feel that there is a definite need for a plan reviewer in our department. Um, Will the fees justify that position? I would hope so, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, but it's yeah. also a uh, progressive thing where we need to replace somebody pretty soon, too. Well, there, there's, there's obviously people that aren't going to be here forever, okay. so you've got to get those people trained up. And, and that's true. Building, building the bench is, is something that's important, especially in um, planning and development. Um, one of the things that Bert and I have talked a lot about is um, I think we were surprised at how, um, how, how much the workload had, had grown with the um, software program 
uh, or the tracking program that we have for permits, um, people are seeing that they, they, they are now aware that they need those follow-up closeout uh, inspections. We're moving them much faster. We're running them through the process. And we don't want to be the person or we don't want to be the problem in the system. We don't want to be the bottleneck. So that reviewer really helps us manage that workflow. What, what, also level, be what level position is this? Is this like entry, three years, five? It would be below the building division uh, manager position. So middle, middle. yeah. And it's a, we need a backup person when the building division manager is absent. We need somebody to answer the phones and to help answer questions at the window. We have no one mm -hmm. to do that. And backup. and backup inspections, yes. So they are, they are needed. Sounds good. Yes. Is, is it free up? Your, your time to help developers as they come through the door? Yes, and, and we need to currently, our planners are actually doing the OpenGov, managing the OpenGov uh, permitting system. I need to shift that over to the building side so that the planners can get back to planning because right now they're not, it, it's been a struggle. It's been very difficult. I think when the word gets out that Bartlett moves permit processes along really fast, more developers are going to find our town desirable to build it. So that, along with the plan commission consolidation, I think is a huge step. So we hear that anecdotally um, with the, the speed at which the um, PDS department is turning around um, permits. What would take um, some of our neighbors and surrounding communities two weeks to crank out? We do it in three days. So um, I thought I would go into, um, Todd, could you put up that one slide just to show you? So I didn't want to go over the numbers of the activities that we do, but I wanted to show it to you graphically. So this is um, from our activities. You can see that the, our numbers over the last two years have gone up in permits, in the plan reviews, and in the inspections. So that was taken right off of our activity numbers out of our budget. Um, on the, we're not asking for any um, equipment, capital outlay at this time. Our professional development is um, the same as last year. No changes have been made to that. And our um, professional associations is exactly the same as last year with one additional um, item known as the Code Official Safety Specialist Certification. This is actually a five course um, certification um, recognized by the ICC um, for our, our two code officers for um, Avoidance tactics, situational awareness, and de-escalation skills. So I, I think it would be, be very beneficial to them. Other than that, it's, it's exactly the same as last year. Um, going over our line items, um, our, our salaries are, are, are going up as a result of the new plan reviewer request. Um, our service agreements went up slightly, 5% with on the online permitting system and a, a new copy or service agreement. Our professional development went up. We have a biennial, a biennial property maintenance conference that's in Madison for our code officers. Um, I, believe it or not, I actually attended this uh, many moons ago, um, and it's it's very good program in Madison. I highly recommend it. Um, our, our dues have gone, um, have gone up slightly due to the um, code specialist certification being added. And then our largest increases um, in our contingency fund. Uh, this year we had a 
an emergency cleanup of a vacant building that we have had um, issues with for many years. Um, <clears throat> it rained and it flooded the basement. It was full of um, items in the basement. We had to have an emergency cleanup to, so that mold would not grow down there. And that was uh, their sump pump failed and we expended $9,000 for that. So we have a lien on the property, uh, but that is primarily why um, I, I'm a cautious for the future if other um, structures that may come our way that we have to have a fund here that... Um, John just is, poured it up. Yes. And what property was that? That was the 677, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, that had been a in that neighborhood. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bert. Why don't you talk a little I, bit about... I missed the address. What, what was it? Was it a residential address? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, it's um, 677 Heather, and it's it's been an ongoing problem for years. Um, I, I'm happy to say, actually, just this week, they finally have registered their house as a vacant building. They've paid the fees for the registration, and they are reaching out to the staff now for the first time in about six years. Is this the house that we were working with last year where that where the over, was all overgrown that the neighbors were complaining? Yes. yes. So I'm asking for um, additional funds in my contingency uh, line item. Makes sense. Yes, yes, yes. Um, when, we have hoard, when, we have, um, when we have hoarding situations, um, that's the fund that we take that out as well. And it's also gone up um, because I have agreed to take on the recording fees from finance. Uh, they're not huge, but um, it's part of it, part of the increase. Uh, so with that, I think that's, if you have any questions. I know we talked about um, some time ago this wave. Um, we've had a lot of conversations around it. but. At one point, we were talking about contractually doing it. Tell us what the advantages and disadvantages of contracting out and training and then losing them and <clears throat> like for reviewers and stuff. So we, we do to solve Trustee yeah. Ranke's legacy situation. So we do have um, we have an emer emergency um, backup plan review with uh, TPI just temporarily. Uh, while our when we didn't have a division manager, um, and Paul and I are going to talk about that. Is, is so we use TPI. There, how what's the limit that we had with them, Bert? We had a twenty five or a twenty thousand dollar limit um, on the use of their services for plan review. Um, they're helping with our uh, stormwater certification program. Um, using some outside help for that. Um, when the township wanted us to expedite their review, um, you know, we're giving them, they're another taxing district, so of course we're giving them um, a break on, on their fees and they wanted us to move faster, but we had a lot of development fees. Not all of them, not all of them, not all of them, just Bert's. Um, but they wanted us to go faster. We couldn't go faster. We had other projects ahead of them. And I said, well, if you want us to move faster, we can send them out and you can pay for it. The, a lot of those reviews are, are, are um, the cost for, well, not all, all of those. All of those costs that are associated with the outside plan reviews are passed on to the developers. Um, we find that, that um, having them at our disposal um, during the crunch times really makes a difference for us. And I think Bert and I would like to um, make it a more permanent relationship. So um, it, it's my understanding that the village has had a um, plan review consultant for many, many years. They typically are going to review the large industrial commercial buildings that we get in the village. It's just too much for our staff. It t it's too time consuming. So we, we send all of those out. That's what we do. Uh, so that's always been our process. What is there? That is not changing. That is not changing. Um, that person retired. 
the, the, our former our former um, consultant retired. Yes. Plans for windows and pools and driveways and decks, and, the, but the big stuff is still going to be farmed out. The big stuff still gets farmed out. Our division manager and this new position would split the plan reviews for all of the other type of permits. Deck permits actually take a long time to review, and we want to get it right. We don't want to rush those. We don't want to make a mistake. Um, so all the other types of permits. Some of the simpler ones, the express ones, can be reviewed even by our building inspectors. In the summertime, they are so busy, they barely have the time to return phone calls, let alone do a plan review. So this person is that backup for the division manager. Yes, we did, who was the plan reviewer as well. We, did, we don't, didn't have that position. The costs for the expediting reviews are covered by the developer when you're sending them out to TPI, correct? Yes. Those have not impacted us financially. That, that is correct. That, uh, that is a pass through, yes. Anyone else? All right, Mr. President, that's all we have. Thank you very much. Thank you for the rundown on all of the new yeah. developments. That was very enlightening. What, what, all of the new real estate taxes coming into our village. What's the reason for the adjudication going up? The, am the amount of cases in local adjudication? So we've taken, a, uh, the last two years, we've taken a little bit more aggressive stance on some properties that have really been dilapidated, and, and we're trying to up our enforcement on that. Trustee Gansey, House Florida, and do you have any more questions? Everything's great here. I'm good on the questions. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Daney, second by Trustee Hopkins. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Daney? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Gunstein? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Frankie? Yes. Swanski? Yes. We are adjourned.